The last thing I want to talk about in this section are exceptions when we're solving. So usually, and particularly in the examples we've seen, we tend to get a finite number of answers for equations. Now, the examples we've seen, we've had one answer. Um, it is possible to get more than one answer, but usually you get a fixed number of answers. Uh, but there are a few exceptions. So there are times where you could get no answers. So there's no solution that works um, or infinitely many answers. Um, so every single number works in the equation. So let's look at those two examples. Uh, and actually something very specific happens in both cases. So when we're solving something where we get sort of a bizarre answer, either a no solution or infinitely many solutions, then when we're solving our variables end up canceling out. Um, so double check, you know, obviously this can happen sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time though. So if it's happening, go back and double check, make sure to make a mistake. Um, but if your variables cancel out, then either you're going to have a false statement which means that you have no solution, or you're gonna have a true statement, which means that everything is a solution. And those are your two exceptions that could happen here with equations. So I have two examples here. I'm just gonna start solving them. Now, these ones are a little bit more obvious, I think, um, but a lot of times when we're solving equations, you're not gonna recognize it right away. So I start on the right here by distributing and I get two X and then two times four is eight, so plus eight. And I want to bring my variables together. So I'm going to try to bring my x's to the left. And to do that, I'm going to have to subtract 2x. But what happens is that it doesn't just cancel here. It also cancels here because 2 minus 2 is 0. So this is not x left. It's just 0x. It's gone. And what you have is 6 equals 8. Now, this is a false statement. So in this case, what we have is that there is no solution to this example. So nothing at all is ever going to work here. In our second case, this was a little less obvious, I think. We start solving. And again, you're solving using your regular rules. So there's nothing at the beginning that has to jump out to say that you have an exception going on here. It just looks like a regular problem. On the right, I actually do have some like terms I can combine first. I see a 6x and a minus 2x, which becomes 4x. Notice when I'm combining like terms on the same side of the equation, I don't change any signs. Like I don't do plus two plus two. It's just because they're already together. I only do the pluses or the minuses on both sides when they're on different sides of the equation. So now I try to get my X's together. And again, when I go to bring my X's over and I subtract four X, they cancel on both sides. So I'm left with six equals six. Now this here is different. This is a true statement. So what happens here is we actually have infinitely many. Solutions, so basically all real numbers. Um, our solutions here, we actually have a name for it. your book doesn't really go into it in detail, but it's called an identity. So if you've heard of that before, it's the same thing. Um, so we call these identities, which mean that every single answer is a solution. Now, in theory, these can happy, happen. In reality, if we're doing some sort of real world application, you're not going to see um, infinitely many solutions. That really wouldn't happen uh, in the real world and any examples that we're going to see. Uh, but it can happen theoretically. So it's just something to be on the lookout. Um, however, we could have no solutions in the real world. So you're not going to see them so much in your text. But if you actually were trying to solve a real world problem, or maybe design a model. So maybe we're trying to manufacture a new product, um, but if our profits are too, sorry, if our costs are too high, it may not be an option for us to make a profit, right? There could be no solution. So we may have to go back to the drawing board and, and reassess or find new vendors or something like that. Um, so no solutions, we do see a little bit more um, than we do infinitely many solutions, but on your homework, just be on the lookout for either of them. Uh, but again, you shouldn't see every example like that. So if you're getting too many, go back and just check your work and make sure you haven't. Stay.